digital radio mics had to happen. Mm. There was no option, we had to do that. And that therefore is a worthwhile technology to invest in and, and we're all going to use it. And there's various benefits in terms of sound quality, you know, the lack of compounder circuitry, all that kind of thing, which gives us great sound. But also on the practical side, the frequencies can be fitted in. So that's good. Digital consoles has, has opened up a whole world of, you know, almost like an Aladdin's cave of goodies that we can use. Uh, and, and also from a programming point of view, you know, we can copy cues and all, all kinds of things. Anything you can do on your computer, you can do on your console. Although we're not allowed to check our emails on them, which is really annoying. <laughs>when a when a sound designer goes into a show when Richard goes into a show he has to think a little bit more outside the box to what's to make that difference you've got to deal with the basics but you also have to um, you have to have you have to add something a little bit different you know and the spaces in London there are not enough theatres in London now it's uh, the, uh, the London theatres in London they're full, we're full up we have not you know you can see now that there's companies like Troubadours who are basically building theatres to accommodate the amount of shows that are coming in and, and that puts up a whole different world of challenges. You have uh, a theatre like the Noel Coward, which is a, a typical, we're not, certainly when I started at Autograph, was a typical playhouse, now has a musical in it. And, you know, and then trying to fit a full-scale musical into something that's a 900-seater playhouse, that's another challenge. So it is constantly, constantly being pushed um, and everything has to be different. It has to be different or it doesn't work. my experience like so much of actually when someone sums up to you and says my I can't hear or it sounds rubbish or I'm having a problem it's it's getting underneath that and finding out why you know why is it that you're today having a problem you know and all of those things that actually when you end up working out what it is that actually it's not that you need vocal feedback it's that actually you can't hear that instrument line yeah. or there's yeah. something where and actually you can you know so it is all those actually if you've got a good relationship yeah. with your cast and your crew then you can you can figure those things out and you can find out what the actual problem is characters in the show they'll wear two microphones normally because uh, as I'm sure you know occasionally sweat uh, can, can just temporarily dull down a microphone so we like to be able to switch over to the B packs so if we don't lose any quality and uh, clarity in, in the sound so I'm sure you've had to wear two, two mic packs now obviously they used to be larger and we used to get a lot of hassle from from the wardrobe the costume designer, set designer, and also from the occasional temperamental performer. Oh. Who might have said, I'm not wearing two of those, that's ridiculous. It makes my backside look enormous. And so, you know, uh, so there's been a lot of pressures for that kind of thing. And so the manufacturers have helped by reducing the size of the transmitters. And uh, in Insure's case, uh, changing the shape of the transmitter as well. So, so it's much more sort of ergonomically beautiful.